Hi, my name is Lyon McBride, and my project is on Sir James Dewar. Sir James Dewar was a famous Scottish scientist born as the youngest of six boys in Kindergarten on Forth, Scotland, in the year 1842. At the age of 10, James suffered a serious case of rheumatic fever, something of which influenced his interests in becoming a successful chemist at a young age. During the two-year period of a serious fever, an extreme obstacle in his life, Dewar learned the art of violin making, an action that later changed his future. At the age of 15, Sir James Dewar's parents died, sparking his interest in pursuing his dreams as a kid just to make his beloved parents happy and satisfy the love and support of his community. After perfecting the art of violin making, he later developed a mechanical model of Alexander Crumb Brown's graphic notation for organic compounds. This model was then sent to Frederick Cuclay and Ghent, who then invited him to spend some time in the laboratory. Dewar received his scientific training at Dollar Academy in the University of Edinburgh, where he studied under Lord Playfair, eventually becoming Lord Playfair's assistant. Dewar also studied under August Kekulé at Ghent. Becoming a fellow of Peterhouse, James Dewar attended the University of Cambridge in 1875, soon becoming elected as a professor of natural experimental philosophy. A couple years later, in 1877, the Scottish scientist became a member of the Royal Institution, holding the role of Fullerian Professor of Chemistry. As if two marvelous achievements weren't enough, Sir James Dewar was also the president of the Chemical Society in 1897, the president of the British Association for the Advancements of Science in 1902, and also served on the Committee on Explosives. While serving on the Committee of Explosives, Dewar and another man, Frederick Augustus Sabel, developed a smokeless gunpowder alternative, also known as cordite. In 1867, James Dewar described chemical formula for benzene, which was later proved to be scientifically incorrect. Dewar's formula for benzene did not represent it correctly and was not advised by James Dewar. This incorrect discovery is so sometimes called Dewar benzene. Dewar was interested in changes that took place in the electrical condition of the retina under its influence in various gaseous elements separated from atmospheric air by the aid of low temperatures. These interests resulted in Dewar's illustration of the liquidification of oxygen in air, and by the year 1891, he had built machines that yielded liquid oxygen in industrial quantities, finally demonstrating that both liquid and oxygen ozone are strongly attracted by a magnet. After all of these wonderful accomplishments, Sir James Dewar thought he needed vacuum-jacketed vessels for the storage of liquid substances, later known as the Dewar flask, a thermos, or vacuum flask. A few years after making a thermos, Dewar began to experiment the powers of charcoal when cooled to low temperatures. Sir James Dewar applied his research of charcoal and applied his research to the production of high vacuums. This investigation was extremely useful for further experiments in atomic physics. All of Sir James Dewar's inventions and discoveries had a new meaning to science giving both himself and others reasons to continue to study and get involved with new experiments. On March 27, 1923, Sir James Dewar died in London, England at 80 years old. Awards and recognition seemed to be something James was known for before his death, receiving a Hodgkin's Gold Medal from the Smithsonian Institution, the Lavoisier Medal from the French Academy of the Sciences, an Albert Medal from the Royal Society of Arts, and the Franklin Medal in 1919. James was an inspiration to many people, and his inventions and discoveries changed science today. Without his miraculous inventions, science would have a whole different meaning. So James Dewar's objective was to do the best that he can for his parents and himself, and his legacy still lives on until this day.